Welcome to Mellifont Abbey. This is the gateway, the 16th century gateway to the much older abbey. This was built after the dissolution of the monasteries by Henry VIII. And unfortunately, it was constructed from the rubble of the ancient Cistercian monastery, which we're going to see now presently. This is the gateway to the northern part of the Pale. Uh, I'm inside the Pale and I'm outside the Pale. So this northern gateway defines British jurisdiction in Ireland. Those who lived outside the Pale were savage Irish. Those who lived inside the Pale were civilised Anglo-Irish people who succumbed and who believed in the English rule of law and their jurisdiction and, and power on the island of Ireland. This is the last standing building in this magnificent monastic settlement. It's called the Chapter House and it's where the municipal jobs and duties of the monastic settlement were settled by the abbot. But more importantly, in 1603, in March 1603, a seminal event in Irish history happened in here, right in here, in the chapter house, whereupon Hugh O'Neill, the Red Hugh, retreating from defeat at the Battle of Kinsale, sought refuge here from Henry Moore, who had already turned, turned his coat towards the English. He summoned the Viceroy, the victor of Kinsale, Lord Mountjoy, and the three of them there signed the city of Mellifon inside. Under the watchful gaze of the Viceroy Mountjoy, Hugh O'Neill, the great chieftain of Dungannon of Tyrone, ceded his lordship or his chieftainship to the Queen, who in any event was already dead unbeknown to him. I will quote from the great um, the great accord, submission made by Hugh O'Neill, Earl of Tyrone, to Lord Deputy Mountjoy at Mellifont in March 1603. I, Hugh O'Neill, by the Queen of England, France and Ireland, her most gracious favour created Earl of Tyrone, do with all true and humble penitency prostrate myself at her royal feet and absolutely submit unto her mercy most sorrowfully imploring her gracious commiseration and appealing only to her princely clemency. So all this is what St Malachy provided the first Cistercians in the early 12th century when they came from France. On Monaster Moor, or the Great Abbey, the original the biggest and the best. And from here on Monish de Moor, the Great Abbey, the Cistercians spread out all over Ireland and some of them are still here today. This is the area that was despoiled in 1539 by the dissolution of the monasteries and Henry VIII, the English king's um, determination to crush Catholicism. And as we mentioned earlier on, the tower then that was built from the soil or the rubble of the magnificent Cistercian Monastery, still there, there today, a sentinel to the English jurisdiction in Ireland. What a magnificent, fabulous settlement this evening and as we approach Hoy Summer and the house martins and the swallows and all the rest of them and the, the flora as well as at their height. Uh, it's a magnificent place that will astound the visitor. <laughs>